Hello everyone, this is Kevin Alexander with AltaVista Technology. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the functionality that makes Business Central a full-featured order entry solution. There's a lot of good stuff packed into this area, so let's get started. Let's dive right into the order entry screen. So we'll begin by starting a new order here. And in our order entry screen, uh, we can begin an order a couple different ways. I could uh, begin to type in the customer uh, name here. So we'll go ahead and just start typing a uh, name here of our customer. And it will recognize uh, that customer name. And if it finds it, it'll return the rest of the information uh, for that particular customer. And uh, you'll notice here in our general section, we have some uh, customer info, in, some customer information, as well as uh, some date related information. So uh, the date is an example that uh, the order went into the system. And also if we have a requested delivery date from the customer. Now within this section, we always have this show more and this will reveal a lot more of the fields uh, in that sales order header. And these can be placed uh, visible uh, while this is collapsed. So some fields that maybe uh, you might find relevant here and uh, you can add in things like your customer PO number if you have a name from your uh, customer so this you know came from a particular individual uh, from the organization uh, we'll just uh, put uh, customer PO number here and we'll enter one in here's an example and again we mentioned these delivery date and promise dates so uh, they may give us a specific date and uh, maybe based on our available to promise or capable capable to promise uh, feature, uh, this date might change. And we'll talk a little bit about that here going forward. So I'm going to click show less here. So we get down here in the in the body of our order. This is kind of where, uh, you know, we start to put in all the information. And so I thought it would be useful to kind of look at a couple of different types of items uh, that uh, you may have in your organization and how those might look and be handled here in the sales order process. So this first one that I'm going to enter in here is uh, this bicycle pint glass. Now, when this uh, pint glass populates here, uh, this particular glass uh, comes in many different colors. So uh, for this item, we have what we call a variant code. And we can come here and look at the different uh, types that this particular glass comes in. So Another uh, example, this might be t-shirts, right? Where I've got small, medium, and large t-shirts, but I really don't want to have uh, individual item numbers for these. I'd really like this to have one item number and then have different sizes. And so in this case, I've got these different pint glasses and then I've got different colors. So I can select the color uh, here and move forward. Now, and in Business Central, uh, it, will track your inventory by item and by variant. So you'd be able to look at, for this item, exactly how many of these uh, blue bicycle pine glasses we have. That's one type of item. Another type uh, common, right, is when you have lot or serial controlled items. And I'm going to uh, enter in this particular one. And this is uh, this blush carpet in beige. And I can enter in a certain number of pieces here. So let's just uh, we'll put in uh, uh, 10 here. Uh, but this is a lot controlled item. And so we can uh, specify that lot information several different ways. So uh, one way is that at this point in time, we could go in and, and specify the lot that we would like uh, our warehouse um, distributor to uh, use. Uh, but sometimes for a product like this, uh, you only want to record the uh, outgoing lot number. So when you set up items inside of Business Central, you can specify whether an item, um, whether it's serial or lot control, needs to, uh, that lot and serial number need to be specified all the way from the point of receipt to the point that you ship it, or only when certain actions uh, happen inside of Business Central, such as shipping. This particular item uh, is lot controlled end to end. So we're gonna uh, actually go into lines here and related information and to our item tracking lines. And this will open up uh, where we can select uh, our lot and or serial number here. So we know this is a lot controlled item and we can see here we have 10 pieces and so let's just go select uh, that particular lot. You can see I've got a couple different 
uh, ones to choose from here. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Um, and just as a note, uh, if your lots uh, need to be um, have expiration dates associated with them, uh, that could be uh, accommodated as well. So I've specified uh, that particular item here. Uh, you know, another type of item is something that maybe we assemble uh, is part of the process of shipping. So uh, maybe, uh, you know, some people might call it kits. Others might call it assemblies. Um, others call them bill of materials. Not full, man not full manufacturing in this particular demo. Um, so we refer to them as assembly orders here. And I'm going to go ahead and enter in an item in the system uh, that requires uh, assembly be done uh, to it on its way out. Now, this has a couple different uh, perks as well. So when I enter that item, uh, a couple things here happened um, that I'll point out. Uh, I'm going to just ship one of these. And you may have noticed uh, when that occurred that uh, below here, uh, I had some additional uh, information uh, fill in. So for all of our items, uh, we can have what we call extended text. And that extended text, uh, we can specify what documents it shows up on and whether it shows up automatically or whether you know we can uh, manually uh, prompt for that. In this case, I had some automatic text come in and have just a little more description about what this particular cafe bundle is here. All right. So in doing so, here, uh, now we can look at some of the assembly information related to this uh, cafe. So let's look at uh, items that make this up. We come back here to our line menu and related information once again. And here we have our assemble to order and our assemble to order lines. And here we can see it uses uh, or uh, includes this table and six of these chairs. So what else might be useful here is that uh, I also could add or subtract here um, at this point. So uh, uh, both quantities or if I wanted to add additional items here. So not really a true configuration, but the ability right to kind of tailor this uh, uh, assembly uh, for this for this customer. I'll go ahead and close that here. So uh, where we've got multiple products now that'll be involved in the process here. Now, when we come down and we've been, uh, these line items have been items in a few of the comments, right, based on this extended text, uh, we also have down here um, some options. So uh, as an example, you know, uh, just based on the nature of some of the products on order, maybe uh, we provide a resource uh, for assembly. So I could enter a resource item here. My items happen to be uh, particular individuals, but you know these could be uh, generic as well. So I'm going to go ahead though and just specify an individual, and I'm just going to use the description, and we're just going to call this uh, assembly. And here we can now uh, specify uh, maybe the number of hours, right, for that, and we'll put two hours uh, uh, for that particular charge. And also we might have. Um, uh, some freight or shipping associated uh, with this particular order as well. And so I can specify, you know, that particular uh, ship and freight uh, code here as well. And again, you know, one of these, and let's just specify and say like that's $75 for a shipping. And so this uh, is a way for us to be able to uh, put together our, our orders uh, uh, very quickly here. Now, some other things to note functionally wise here is uh, getting a look at maybe what our inventory position is uh, for this order. And this could have occurred as we uh, walked our way through the process, but we can kind of show it as a whole here. So a few of note. So back up in our menu, I'm going to go to actions and we're going to go to functions. So you notice here we can uh, create purchase orders uh, right from this uh, spot as well. So if we um, happen to be an organization where our customer service folks are both placing the orders and uh, cutting purchase orders to suppliers at the same time. Uh, they can do that process here all at once. Um, if I move over to uh, planning here, uh, we can look at order promising and demand planning. So if I look at order promising here, this uh, would go out and look at these particular items 
and I don't I look at kind of the demand and uh, supply information and let us know if perhaps based on any of that um, supply and demand, when we might be able to uh, deliver uh, these items. And I don't have any discrepancies here ha having uh, run this. So I can simply accept it and, and this would hold all of our dates here. So we haven't specified any additional dates, but if we had had dates that uh, we couldn't comply with uh, their request, uh, it would then give us a new plan date uh, or promise date for them. And we could do that from here. So we can see all the inventory positions uh, uh, using our available to promise uh, capabilities here. And then also off of our actions, right? Also look at, look at what uh, demand overview is. And this is interesting as well, because as a user, I, uh, I can run this. And when this opens up, what I'm really looking at is I'm seeing each of the items that we, that we listed out, right, on our order. And it's letting us know, uh, let's go, Let's widen that here. Uh, that uh, what our uh, on hand is of a particular date uh, that we've got sales for those items coming up on um, other dates uh, on the on these particular dates as well. So this is all based on this one order. But if I had several orders in the system, I would see those demand lines here. So sometimes when you get into a situation where maybe you have to make decisions about uh, which customers um, you're going to ship to or which orders maybe you need to ship complete versus roll out partials. This tool can kind of help in that decision support along the way. There's a couple other uh, quick uh, things to note here. Uh, we can go into navigate and we look at this order. We can look at what we call order statistics. And the statistics are showing us all of the um, dollar ramic ramifications, right? Uh, or distributions that are gonna occur here. Uh, and if we go ahead and expand this, uh, we have an idea now of, you know, uh, how much uh, is on this total order, what our uh, profit might be on this, uh, total number of items. Uh, if we have been using weight on our items, it would kind of net that out for us. So whether you're using, you know, tear weight or just product weight uh, and do the same uh, as well for uh, shipping information. So order statistics uh, give us a lot of the information um, that you might not see right until posting in, in some other solutions. And so we can come in here, when, let's look at, uh, as we drop down the order, uh, some other uh, things to note here. Uh, the bill to is who we originally selected. Uh, you can have as many different ship to's as uh, needed for a particular customer. So I could select an alternate address if I had any in the system for them. Um, at the same time, uh, if I had uh, someone who's going to be a shipper, separate bill to, I could do that as well. So maybe I'm sh uh, this A Datum Corporation, maybe this is uh, who the uh, sell to is, but the bill to customer is somebody different, and the ship to uh, could be a separate location altogether as well. And then uh, here we can drop in uh, some of maybe what the uh, shipping information needs to be. So if we were going to run something like uh, DHL and uh, specify, you know, standard shipping here, um, we could do that. And uh, note here that we can also tracking information back into the order and then later uh, be able to actually uh, select that and go out to the carrier site um, if they support it and bring back the tracking information so we can kind of uh, get an update on those orders if needed. So let's move up the print and send here. Um, and uh, on our uh, orders, we can uh, we can send email confirmations. Uh, we can print a confirm or just print a confirmation. In this case, let's just look at uh, what that might look like going out. So I could uh, you know, print here to screen and also could uh, send this an email as well, whether it's an attachment. But I think this is an interesting area because a lot of times uh, folks have comments and notes that they would like to add to order. So you can, we can add a note here. We call this, uh, this my note as an example. So let's type in my note. Uh, and notes are kind of like, uh, I look at these as kind of like annotations. We also have the ability to have comments. I look at comments as more of a threaded discussion. So by date, like 
maybe uh, there's certain information going back and forth. Like, uh, you know, we sent the order to the customer. We're waiting for confirmation back. It got confirmed on a certain date. And we can see that information here. So when we look at the comment section, this is a good place for that type of information. And then along the way, we may have attachments that we might want to add to uh, the order here. So, you know, example here, I've got this one document. And I'm just going to drag that right into uh, the order. And now it's attached uh, this Excel file uh, to this order as well. And <clears throat> in a lot of organizations, I know you, they like to uh, have a copy of the uh, order confirmation also attached to the order. And you can do that as well if you'd like. You can do that through print and send. Uh, and we can attach as a PDF. And uh, we're actually, we can attach the order confirmation right here as well. And it's going to put that right into our attachments area. So if we come back here and take a look, uh, there's that order confirmation that we just added. So, you know, I hope uh, you found this video useful. Uh, we'll see you again soon with some other Business Central uh, videos exploring uh, the distribution capabilities. You know, in the meantime, please contact us if you'd like to learn more about Business Central. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up. And if it's your first time with us, click that subscribe button to stay current on all our content. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.